Today we're talking about the one unemployment statistic alarming Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell more than the rest. Am I about to be out of a job? That's right, it's Joe Biden's first opportunity to appoint someone to lead the Federal Reserve and people are asking, is it about to be out with the old and in with the new? Progressives are coming out of the woodwork to criticize Powell and push for a more progressive nominee. Now, What makes this topic particularly interesting and episode worthy is that these criticisms stem from Federal Reserve responsibilities that we barely ever get to talk about. Forget the sexy will they won't they tango of adjusting the key interest rates or tampering with bond purchases, today the name of the game is banking regulation. Now, In this area, well, Jerome Powell is a little bit less of a crowd pleaser. Top Powell critic Elizabeth Warren recently came out swinging. The chairman of the Federal Reserve has two obligations, one to lead us in monetary policy and the second in regulating the largest financial institutions. I have asked Jerome Powell repeatedly about his views on regulation. I am concerned when I see the rules weakened rather than strengthened. Now, In general, just to take a broad look at this whole thing, the goal of banking regulation is less eat the rich punitive restrictions designed to make elites life harder. It's more, if these assets decline in value, is that just going to wipe out the entire financial system? Take 2008 for example. Banks were holding so much of their reserves in mortgage backed securities that when the price of that specific asset collapsed, well, there goes the whole system. We were literally banking on those securities maintaining their value. Now, the rules we talk about today really revolve around padding the system so that our economy doesn't hinge entirely on the value of a few assets. With that goal in mind, what did Powell do in his first term? Well, first, he simplified capital requirements in the most complicated of ways. Now, under Janet Yellen, capital requirements were quite rigid. Oh, you're a bank and you keep this much of your holdings invested in assets? Well, you need to keep this much money in cash in case that investment goes up in smoke. Now, under Jerome Powell, on the other hand, that regulation lost a bit of its rigidity. You hold this much money in investments? Well, you gotta hold this much in cash. Unless this asset is considered a less risky asset, then you can back it up with less cash. Now, in a similar vein, after everything crashed and burned in 2008, the Federal Reserve started conducting stress tests. Now, these tests were essentially financial role playing games. All right, banks, give us your balance sheet and we're going to crash the economy and see how your holdings do. Ooh, let's see how you would fare in a real estate collapse. I'm seeing a lot of mortgages on this balance sheet. <laughs> Maybe we throw in a little stock market collapse while we're at it. Hey, hey, oh, looks like you're covered there. Now, Powell made a few changes to these tests as well. First, he lessened the severity of the simulated economic catastrophes, therefore lowering the bar on banks' holdings that they had to surpass. Now you just have to survive a recession, not the Great Recession. Similarly, he told banks ahead of time what the collapses would be simulated and look like, so they could prepare for those crash tests before the Federal Reserve evaluated their balance sheets. Now, critics allege that this is the equivalent of a teacher giving a student the test questions before they have to take it. I mean, you can come out on top if you know exactly when and what a collapse is going to look like. Now, you know, for example, if you're going to be tested on a stock market collapse, well, you might want to shift your holdings towards long term mortgages. Hey, we passed the test. Now, similarly, he took a look at the Volcker Rule and rolled that back. Now, the Volcker Rule is a rule that says that banks cannot use federally insured depositor money to invest in riskier assets like the stock market. That would be like rolling up to a poker table with someone else's savings and a third party's promise to swoop in and pay off any losses to the person whose money you're using to gamble. You literally couldn't have less skin in the game at that point. Hmm, I'm seeing a 7 high. All in. 
Ooh, Uncle Sam, I lost all the money people were keeping in their savings account. Why don't you get the FDIC on the phone and pay him back? Next hand, eight high, all in. Now while the rollback of the Volcker rule doesn't mean that the money you put in your savings account will be used by the bank to buy stocks, while Powell's rollback of the Volcker rule doesn't mean that the money you put in your savings account will be used by your bank to buy stocks, it does mean that it could be used by the banks to invest in private equity funds, similar to the mortgage backed securities that crashed in 2008. Buying one stock is risky, but investing in a pool of equity? Well, safety in numbers. There's no way that one collapse will lead to broader devaluations. Now, during the Powell era, America also saw huge consolidation of banks as the Federal Reserve was given the thumbs up to everybody to merge and allowing large banks to be picking up medium sized brokerages. No one liked the previous deregulations I mentioned, this one doesn't increase the risk of a bank failing. But it does mean that if a bank does fail, well, that is going to be a much bigger problem. Larger banks lead to too big to fail situations. So to sum up the changes that Powell made, banks could get bigger, make riskier investments, and back those investments with less cash. Now this multi-year deregulatory process places a whole new light on Jerome Powell's mad dash to back a dump truck full of cash into big bank safes during the pandemic. You see, in 2019, just before everything hit the fan, there was an alive and well debate between Jerome Powell and today's progressive frontrunner Lael Bernard over how to handle banking regulation. The Federal Reserve was playing it pretty fast and loose with these capital requirements, meaning that banks could take on a lot of risk with savers' money and not have the cash to back it up. Now, Brainard pointed to the high levels and poor quality of corporate debt, stretched asset valuations, and other risks as a reason to justify activating a Federal Reserve tool that increased capital requirements for banks. Powell shot that down. Now, because he shot that down, there was little wiggle room when the arrows started to point in the wrong direction. With the little cash cushion heading into the period of economic turmoil triggered by the spread of COVID-19, the Federal Reserve did not have a ready-made tool to prudently relieve banks from the pressure to deleverage through asset fire sales in times of stress. Instead, the Federal Reserve acted in two ways. First, the infamous enormous bailout, coupled with an unlimited bond buying program. Now here the Federal Reserve basically went up to banks and said, gee, it looks like you guys have no cash on hand anymore. And you have all these long term investments dragging down your books. Tell you what, I'm going to buy them all from you for cash so that you can stay solvent. Now while this hand was giving the banks all that cash, the other hand was chipping away at post crisis capital requirements enabling banks to back up their investments with even less cash. We have to keep you guys solvent so don't hold back. Now critics of Powell say that the coronavirus pandemic might have actually covered his butt a little bit by wrapping up a coming financial collapse into a larger unrelated societal collapse. <gasps> oh no, the building that was falling apart because I cut all those corners just burned down in a completely unrelated fire. Huh. Well, let me give unlimited money to construction crews so we can begin to rebuild the whole thing. <laughs> Don't look at me. It was the fire. Now, moderate Democrats' opinion of Powell can best be summed up by this Sherrod Brown quote. I like what Chairman Powell has done on monetary policy. I do not like what he's done on regulation. Is that tepid enthusiasm enough to get Jerome Powell across the finish line? We'll see. Thank you, and that's probably not all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, if you want to learn about the differences between Powell's monetary policy and Yellen's monetary policy, and see Powell in a much more positive light than he was presented in this episode, click over here. 
I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. And if you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.